Welcome and thank you all for joining us today for the GoGuardian Teacher webinar. My name is Lauren and I'm a Customer Success Manager here at GoGuardian. Today I'm going to show you how to maximize the power of our classroom management tool. We may have some longtime users as well as some first time users tuning in, so I'll do my best to make this valuable for all. In this webinar, I'll be covering how to set up classrooms, add students and run sessions, how to add owners, teachers, and helpers to each classroom, how to use timeline view and screen view, how to use commands to manage the classroom, chat and announcement feature, how to create and apply scenes effectively, and how to view individual student browsing history. We have another CSM standing by to answer any questions you have. Feel free to chat into the box with any questions at any time. This session is also being recorded and will be sent to all attendees after it concludes. Finally, if any other faculty or staff from your school was unable to attend the session, no need to worry, we'll be hosting teacher webinars every week through October. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing you'll wanna do is add your classrooms. You can do so by clicking the green Add Classroom button. When you do, you can manually create your classroom you can put in the name, select the subject, and we can go ahead and add this classroom. When adding a classroom, there are three different ways in which you can enroll your students. You can use an enroll code. The students will have to enter the six digit code into their screen at enroll.goguardian.com. You can also add students individually by their email addresses. And lastly, you can do a CSV import of all the students' email addresses. Another thing we can do on our classroom page is by going in and adding teachers. To do so, you can go ahead and click Add Teacher at the top right. You can go ahead and search for your teacher, and then you can also designate a role for this teacher. To see the differences in the roles, you can click on this icon and it'll bring you to the Help Center article, which will show you the differences between helper, teacher, and owner. Another thing we can do is edit the settings of our classroom. You can always go ahead and change the classroom name, the subject, also the classroom tile color. We can also go into scheduling. With schedules, you can go ahead and select the time and days for these sessions to start. Automatic scheduling is great for media labs, elementary schools, or any setting which basically has regular timed classes. Also in settings, you can go ahead and enable for session reports to be emailed to you after each session. Great. Now let's go back to our classroom tile. That was us manually adding a classroom. There are other ways that you can add a classroom. When you go ahead and add classroom, you can sync a Google Classroom, and you can also have the option to sync Clever ClassLink classes. If you'd like this option, contact the super user of your account to get this added. Now that we've created a classroom, let's actually go in and start a session. I actually have my seventh grade science classroom already here, so we're gonna go ahead and use this classroom. Before starting a new session, you will have the option to go ahead and choose the time limit of your session and whether or not you want to apply a scene to the session. Scenes are basically filterings applied to your browsing environment for the students. We'll go over this in more later on. And then also if you want to exclude students from the session. Let's go ahead and start. When you start your session, you're automatically taken to the screens view for your classroom. The screens view will show you the main tab that your students are browsing. You can also see the other tabs that they have open via the icons at the bottom of your student's tile. There are also a few commands that we can send out to our students. So let's go click into a student and set, start sending out commands. You'll see the command bar at the bottom. You can go ahead and exclude a student. You might wanna exclude a student if they're done taking a test and you don't want them to be altered with your scenes that are applied. You can also exclude a student if they're absent for the day. Let's go ahead and exclude Baran. 
Now, if you've accidentally excluded a student, don't worry, you can go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll see the excluded students tile and we can go ahead and re-include the student. Bronze tile will pop back up and it will take a few seconds to load. Let's click into another student and start sending out more commands. Another option you can do is open a tab on a student's screen. This will automatically bring them to this tab. All you have to do is paste the URL into the box and then click Open Tab. Another option we can do is locking the student's device. By locking the student's device, it will show a message on their screen and they will have to click in order to acknowledge it. This is great if you want to give an announcement to your student or give any additional instruction. You can also take a snapshot of your student's screen in this command bar as well. If you want to view any of the snapshots that you take, you can go ahead and back to the screen's view, click on snapshots, and all the snapshots from this session will be here. The last command we can do on a student's device is closing tabs. So if you see a tab here that a student should not be on, you can go ahead and close this tab. It will then um, immediately remove it from their browsing window. Another way that you can go ahead and view students browsing is by utilizing our off-task alerts. With off-task alerts, it will highlight a student's screen and show them how many seconds and minutes they've been off-task. With off-task alerts, you can go ahead and toggle it on. You can choose the class subject, and then you can choose the sensitivity. Strict means that a student will be allowed to have off-task browsing for 15 seconds. Moderate will allow a student to have off-task browsing for 30 seconds, and lenient will allow a student to be off task for 60 seconds. Let's go ahead and leave this at strict. Another option for viewing your student's history is going into timeline view. With timeline view, you will see blocks from the student's browsing history. With each block, you can go ahead and click onto it and see the other tabs that they were browsing at this time. This is great if you step away from your computer for 10 minutes or would like to see what they were doing um, while you were dealing with another student. Now let's go into one of my favorite features, which is teacher chat. With teacher chat, let's go ahead and enable this on. This feature is great if you have any students that might be on the Shire side and you wanna just reach out to them to see and check in on them. When you enable chat, the icon will appear in the bottom right. Go ahead and click on that and select the student you would like to chat to. Let's go ahead and send a message to Baron. This is one way you can send a message to your students. You can also go in and click on the student's tile, click on chat and chat with him here. Awesome, Baron's doing fine. Let's find out if he needs any extra help. We'll go ahead and send that over to Baron. And you can see here that Baron has the chat window open and is chatting back. Great. You'll know that when a student has a new chat, you'll see a little chat bubble appear in the bottom left corner of their screen as well. There are some other cool features you can do with the chat. You can send an announcement to the whole class. You can do so by clicking into the chat, clicking on the megaphone, and going ahead and writing an announcement. This is great if you wanna let the class know they have five minutes left, and so they should start wrapping it up. You can also broadcast an announcement to a specific student. To do so, click on that student, click on announcement, and Baron will be the one to get this announcement. Announcements for students are great because then they have to click on to the announcement to resume browsing. So if you need to send an important message to the student, this can be done through announcements. A new feature that we just added is calling students, which allows you to connect with your students on a greater level. Let's go ahead and check it out. In Call Students, it gives you the option to voice only call a student or a group of students, a video call and presentation, as well as do a lecture or presentation for your class. 
let's go in and start a video call. Before we start, we have the options to enable our camera, our microphone, as well as record this call. Next, let's select the students or student we would like to invite to the call. Let's check in and see how Baran is doing. Once I hit that call button, a pop-up on Baran's screen will show that his teacher is trying to call him and give him the option to accept the call. Awesome, Baran is in the call. When you're in the call with a group of students, you'll be able to scroll through pages of win windows of student tiles so you can connect with each student individually. Once, you can, once the student connects to the call, you'll see their current screen and you'll be able to mute the student as well as disable the webcam. If during this call Baran has questions, I can go back into my session, click on his tile, and help him get to the right website that he needs to be on by opening this tab. When I go back to the call, I can see that Baran is on task and at Khan Academy. If I have any co-teachers that are in this class, I can simply invite them to this class by copying the URL and sending it over to them. Now, once you're done with the call, you can go ahead and click End Call. Since we opted to have this call recorded, you can go ahead and title your call, copy this link as well to send it in an email, and save the recording. If you happen to misplace the link, no worries, we'll show you where you can access that link later on. The last feature you can do is a lecture presentation. To start a lecture, you can choose to enable your camera, microphone, present your screen, and lock the students to your presentation if you like. You then can select the student or students you'd like to present to and choose what you want to share. You can share your entire screen, an application window, or a Chrome tab. Let's go ahead and share this Chrome tab. Now, during this presentation, the students are seeing the tab that I am on. We can go ahead and go back into the presentation and stop the screen share. And you can also stop presenting as a whole. Sometimes during a classroom session, you want to alter the browsing environment for your student. You can do so by creating a scene. Let's go ahead and click on the scenes. From here, you can see all the scenes that I've created. Let's create a new scene. By doing so, you can click Add Scene. Let's go ahead and name our scene. You can also add a description. Now, scenes can be done in two modes. There is Allow mode, which will allow everything except for what you block, and there is Block mode, which will block everything except what you add to your exceptions list. Let's make this scene in block mode since this is going to be for a midterm. Now to add specific sites to your block mode, you can add the URLs one by one here. We can also wildcard URLs. This means that anything with that domain root is going to be allowed. So for example, docs.google.com. To wildcard it, we'll add an asterisk. And another option you can do is using these district quick list or GoGuardian quick list. These are groupings of websites that we've created and that your district has created to make scenes a lot easier for you to use. If you're curious to see what URLs are in these quick lists, go into Create Edit Lists, and you can go ahead and click onto the list. This will show all the URLs that have popped up and that are in this list. If you want to add some of these lists to your scene, go ahead and select it and click Add List. You can also have a certain URL pop up when this scene is applied. Go in here and go ahead and paste the URL, and you can add this tab. This tab will automatically open when this scene is applied. You can also set the number of maximum tabs open for this class. So let's go ahead with two. Now that we're done editing my scene, let's go ahead and save. 
We have our scene made. Now let's go back into our classroom session and apply it. You can find all your active classroom sessions at the top. To go ahead and apply this scene, we'll go to the top right. Right now it says no scene applied. Click on that and we can go ahead and click on the scene we just created. Great, now all my students are in my scene on Khan Academy and we can get going. If you ever want to end your session early, you can do so by clicking the red button at the top labeled End Session. Or if you need more time during your class, go ahead and click Update Time in the top left. With Update Time, you can increase it with certain minutes or you can put in a specific end time. Let's go ahead and end the session now. With the end session, you'll be brought to a timeline view which you can view what your students were browsing before, as well as the snapshots that were taken and any commands that were given during this session. If you ever want to access your recordings that you have from a session, you can go ahead into that classroom and click on recordings. Here you can easily copy the link and share it with any co-teacher or student that needs it. You can also view all the history done from a classroom. To do so, just click on the classroom, click on the session you would like to view, and you'll be back to this page. The timeline view of all the blocks, you'll be able to see what they were browsing from a high level overview, as well as see if any snapshots were taken and what commands were given. Now that we've seen how we can see reporting for full classrooms, let's dive into student reporting. Go ahead and click on student reports. Choose the classroom and the student. You can do the date range and hit generate report. From here, you'll see the top activity from this specific student, any interventions that were done on the teacher's part, snapshots that were taken, and detailed browsing history from the student. At this time, we don't have a way to export this report, but we really recommend a print to PDF feature to get this report to students, to parents, or to admin. If you have any feedback or an idea you would like to see implemented in the future, please submit those to ideas.goguardian.com. Other users will be able to vote on your idea and our product team frequently looks at this page. I appreciate you joining me for this GoGuardian teacher webinar. If you have any questions, we have team members available to you for another 10 minutes. You can also reach out to your customer success manager. Have a wonderful rest of your day.